Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in the Cupid. In this video, I'm going to show you three signs that are going to tell you you need to optimize your Power BI report. Let's go figure out what they are. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, slow reports, performance problems. Nobody likes that. We want to make it fast. Power BI is supposed to be snappy. So how do we know that we have a slow report? I want to show you three ways, three ways to actually figure out that you possibly have a slow report. All right, enough of all this talking. You know how we like to do it. I'm Guy in a Cube. Let's do what? Let's head over to my machine. We've got a blank page. Every report should have a blank page. I kid, I kid. So what we're gonna do first is just go over to our blazing fast report. And this is gonna be the first sign that you have a performance problem. We can see here that that matrix visual down below took a little bit to actually come up. That wasn't what I would call fast or spunky. And if we click around here on some of the slicers, we can kind of see, look, Mr. Spinny is sitting there. It's not quick. I've seen a lot worse, but it's not super great. So that's the first sign, just perceivably right? It's sluggish. It's not snappy like you would expect it to be. The typical number that I go off of is five seconds. So if it takes longer than five seconds for that report to respond, that is where people will get frustrated and potentially abandon the report and maybe go yell at you. If we can get it even sub second, that's even better. What I don't like about perceivably slow is I don't have any hard numbers, right? This is just a gut feeling. Let's get some actual numbers. So in order to go further with this, I need to close and restart Power BI desktop because you'll notice this one's a little slow, but if I go back to Contoso, it's pretty quick. That's because the visual cache is in play and it didn't really change anything. The only way to clear the visual cache is I got to close and restart Power BI Desktop. And like a good cooking show, we are back on our blank page. So the reason I put the blank page in here is to avoid that visual cache when I first open up the desktop file. Caching is the worst enemy of performance troubleshooting or diagnostics. Caching gets in the way of the actual results. And so this blank page just helps me prevent that caching so I can actually get the real numbers. So in order to get the real numbers, let's go to view. We're going to go to performance analyzer and we're going to start recording. And I'm also going to collapse these so we have more room here. So now with performance analyzer going, we're going to go over to the blazing fast report and I'm also going to do some sorting here. We're going to go sort by DAX and I'm going to sort descending. And we can see here that our really, really big matrix is the slowest. It took over three and a half seconds to actually finish. And we have others that are about a second and a half. These these are all in milliseconds. Overall, it's probably under that five second mark that I told you, but there's still opportunities to make this faster. For example, if I go to really, really big matrix, your second sign that there's an opportunity to optimize is the DAX query. And in this case, it took about two and a half seconds. That's forever from a Power BI perspective. So if we go look at total sales card, we can see here the DAX query is 32 milliseconds. Your slicer is 35 milliseconds. Honestly, even for those, I don't like that speed. If it's over 120 milliseconds, there's an opportunity to optimize the DAX behind this visual. Now we're not gonna get into in this video of how to actually do that. I'll point you to some videos that you can actually go look at to maybe take you further in that journey. If it's under 120 milliseconds, you may start getting diminishing returns. And what I mean by that is how much time do you actually wanna spend and what's the return on investment of actually going that far? It may just not be worth it. If you're seeing that the time spending is just really high on this front, that could be because of the other visuals on the canvas. So I've seen instances where all the DAX is really fast, but others just really slow. If that's the case, you are going to want to look at visual reduction. And I'm going to point off to a video up here that just talked about how to reduce the number of visuals. So just a trick, if you got a bunch of card visuals on your canvas of how to consolidate that to make it faster. This has helped in several customer scenarios. So definitely check out that technique if you are curious. The last sign that it's time to optimize, I'm going to copy the query here and we're going to head over to a tool called DAX Studio. This is a free free tool that you can go download and use. And we're going to put the DAX query in here. I'm going to turn on what's called server timing. So this is going to give me further breakdowns on that DAX timing piece. Come over here. I also mentioned there's a data cache so we can clear that data cache to get a good run. And I'm going to hit clear cache and then run. So this was the actual query that the really, really big matrix visual was running. And we can see here that it took over two seconds to actually complete. And we said that if it's over 120 milliseconds, there's 
a room to optimize. The other sign here that there's a potential to optimize is the storage engine queries. Here you can see 166. If it's over 20, there's room to optimize. If it's under 20, it may not be worth it, but there may still be room to optimize. It's just how much do you want to really invest in that? This video, we're not going to go through how to actually debug these items and how to actually fix the DAX and make it faster. So one thing I want to do is point you over to a video that I did with Phil Seamark from the Power BI Cat team. And we looked at how to actually debug a slow report. That video actually goes through this specific really, really big matrix. So if you want to learn how to debug this specific item, go check out that video. I use this technique all the time to go debug and it works out really great. The other video I'll point you out to is a video that Patrick did with Marco just talking about how to debug DAX using variables. So it's an interesting technique as well. So check that out up above or down in the description below to get more information and to continue your journey in optimizing, which I absolutely want you to do. All right, I want to hand this over to you. What do you think? Did those three signs help you to maybe figure out that you have some work to go do? Let me know down in the comments below what you think, or if you have other signs that something needs to be optimized, share that with the community as well. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.